All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to Come On Over. And uh, I'm Nico. I'm starting out this whole episode with this awesome, not at all awkward intro that that Brandon has so graciously set upon me. And uh, yeah, Brandon, how you doing? I'm good, man. And you know what? I knew you could do it and you did it. And we're proving the world wrong today. That was fantastic. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I guess we can uh, let the audience decide uh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, on how, how we do this. Uh, but taking turns could be nice, for sure. Yes, be, absolutely. Cool. But absolutely. Nice. Well, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Um, so one huge development in my life, it's not mm. really huge at all, but um, so I have been growing my hair out for almost two years it would be two years in march so i I, i've had some like super long jesus locks for a while Mm, Uh, i cut those off i cut them off yesterday oh what yeah man so now i have this um brad pitt from fury look going on Ooh, you gotta send me some pigs baby i will i'll send them to you right now um but yeah i cut my hair off i feel like a new person, I feel cleaner. I feel oddly cleaner. Like there's, there's nothing like a good haircut or right. something like that to really just like, I don't know. It just does it for me, you know. Right. What up? What about that facial? What about the facial follicles? So now with shorter hair, here I just sent you a picture. Um, I'm I'm going for. A Ooh. little bit of a cleaner look. Ooh, baby. Damn. You know? I want to be your sugar baby for sure. <laughs> no, you can be my sugar daddy. I, mm. I, I, I'm, I'm too broke <laughs> to be a sugar daddy. I'm but digging I, look. I'm digging it. I'm going, I'm going with like uh, just a more trimmed appearance, I suppose. Uh, but I feel cleaner, man. I feel good. Like, it, it's amazing, like, what a confidence boost that was. And, like... Yeah. There there were days when I had my long hair where I just felt like, damn, like I can really pull this off. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, I don't know, I was I was getting gas. Sam was talking to me about like some pictures. My, my wife was talking to me about some pictures she had seen with me holding uh, our daughter when she was born when I had short hair. Mm. And um, she said she had missed it. And I was like, OK, I'll cut this shit off today. And I did. Yeah. Damn. So. How, how did that feel that 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 you know that moment when you went to the barbers or whatever and and you and you were like all right yeah, it I was like honestly I was nervous mm-hmm. I I had I had made that decision very quickly and I walked in there and I was like all right I I checked in and from like the moment I checked in I was like ah it's too late. You know, like I, I'm here, I'm cutting yeah. my hair off. And yeah. then I sat in the lobby for like 15 minutes trying to pick a damn hairstyle. And, uh, I just went with the old tried and true, you know, what is it? Short on the side? Yep. Long on the top. I don't, I don't even know what to call it, but yeah, no, I, I mean, I always say this. I, I just basically describe that same, like the same. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I feel yeah. good. How about you, man? How's everything? Oh man, that's beautiful. Uh, everything's good, I guess. Uh, we're um, let's see, what's what's new? Um, well, we got you know uh, the um, in terms of like work and everything. Uh, we have the Christmas dinner, like uh, company dinner thing coming up. We do it before Christmas, obviously. Um, but it's I think we're planning towards it that's why I'm, I'm bringing it up now because we're we're already like planning i think we're doing it on the 5th of december but we're already yeah. choosing like um where we're going to eat and all that stuff um so that's always nice because like I, i'm i'm i mean i i'm sure that some people like are definitely not looking forward to those type of dinners those uh company stuff but i actually yeah. like i like it because um it's not corporate at all you know because it's not yeah. a corporation it's a small business and so it's very familiar and like uh i think it's like 10 of us or 11 of us in total so um it, it's nice it's uh it's also nice to like kind of disconnect a little bit and 
um yeah so i I'm, i always look forward to it because we always do cool stuff last year we did a uh we did an escape room um oh, experience shit. thing and then after that we went out to dinner and after that we went out clubbing so that was nice damn um, so this year they're they're you know organizing it they're, they're setting it up i'm not sure if we're doing another event like that or or what we're doing but we always go to a really nice restaurant they always pay for everything and then we always go out clubbing and they always pay for everything so damn dude yeah. that's nice Mm-hmm. For uh, for Christmas, I mean, I, oh, Jesus. So I, I obviously I work retail. Um, I'm a manager. Um, I do not do a quarter of that for my team. Mm. Um, what I like to do because I always like to celebrate different cultures and different like because in retail you have a wide variety of people that work there. It's not always sure. just like one or two groups. So usually what I do is I have my team do a potluck. I'm like, hey. Okay. Um, but like we're, we're for Thanksgiving, um, I'm having my team bring a whole bunch of, uh, of their food, you know, re- oh, regardless okay. of whatever they do for Thanksgiving. I'm like, Hey, um, if you are okay with it, bring in a plate that you want us all to try that you think we haven't tried before. Mm-hmm. So like, um, I have a Jamaican shift lead. She's bringing some oxtails that her family makes. Um, I have a, um, Filipino which is, which is great for me because um, I grew up in a Filipino household. Phenomenal. Yes. Um, she's bringing some uh, this noodle dish called pancet, which I'm very excited about. We just have people bringing food from all over the place. Oh, that's and cool, then as man. And as the manager, I bring, like, the main meat or something like that. So I asked my team what they wanted. If they wanted the, you know, the, the traditional turkey – they're all good with uh, the beef that I'm going to bring, uh, tri-tip beef. I'm going to mm. smoke it and bring that in there so it's nice and tender. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, 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 just to celebrate different people, man, because that, that's the best way to try the best foods. And you never know if it's going to end up on your table. Right. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. No, that's but, awesome. That's a really great way to, to also have a little bit of that, you know, that I guess, I mean – they're not like family, but you know, that kind of feeling or like, you know, people get along and everything and you're not just work. I mean, you're working together, you know, cause you're at work and everything, but you're also humans and you each have, you know, their own yeah. cultures and all that stuff. So that's always Hell nice yeah. to, to, to get together and do that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, ours is just, um, I know it's not the standard, um, not even like here not like something like that's typical here in spain like i've talked to people here that they don't even do like not even like a third of what we do or even yeah. if we do stuff like each employee has to pay their own shit and that's yeah you know, so i'm kind of like lucky to be in a in, in working at a company that you know does all this um, yeah man so yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. why i look forward to it in my case and and you know that's something that we were talking about this past week and yeah, uh, I think they decided on a place. I'm not sure exactly which one. They'll probably like confirm which one it is. And um, but it, I mean, it's definitely always a a good restaurant. You know, like they always have a you know. Isn't Italian, that the best? So... When you when you can like no pressure, just order mm. what you want. Oh, yeah. or, or do do they they put a budget on y'all? Or no, are they no, just no, like no, no, get what you want. Like, I mean, usually. It's so they'll have like a bunch of like appetizers or like starters and stuff. They'll yeah. just start ordering like a bunch of them. And then usually they'll be like, I guess it depends on the restaurant, but then they'll be like, okay, well, each one, like you just choose your main, you know, your main plate, your main dish. Um, yeah. And that's it. And then obviously you have like bottles of wine and all that stuff. You know, do you ever feel like you overstep? You're like, oh, I don't know if I should order this thing. Oh, Cause- well, me being me i always look at the prices and i always try to go for yeah. like i mean we're talking about restaurants where like i guess the cheapest like main dish or main plate or whatever is probably around 18 to 20 bucks yeah which is a lot for spain um and yeah, then, that's a lot anywhere 20 yeah. bucks for one plate no that's yeah. a lot man and so that's why like i still go like if there's one for like 16 i'm gonna go for that one you know, even though it's not much difference, but um, my my boss took me out for dinner. Okay, mm-hmm. and um, no mention of a budget, nothing. He was just like, you know, get what you want. 
it was a celebration dinner for when I like I, I just I had done something really well for my company. Um, mm -hmm. Can't go into a lot of details because it'll give away the company that I work for. Understand that. Um, but I, I did something really well for my company. Uh, he wanted to celebrate. It took me out to a dinner and he was like, get whatever you want. We went to a really nice restaurant and I was like, you know, part of me wanted to be like, you sure? But mm -hmm. then the other part of me was like, you know what? This is a trillion dollar corporation. Mm. They'll be all right. Right. $50, $50 for a steak. Damn. Uh, and is it coated in gold or what? <laughs> bro, I listen it. Like, and here's the thing, and, th and this is my biggest problem, is I don't go out to eat hardly ever. I don't do fast food. I don't do anything. And, and my main reasoning for that is because I can cook better than they can. Okay? Mm. And that $50 steak kind of proved that. And I'm not going to lie. I ordered it. My expectations, obviously, through the roof, because I'm like, dude, this is a $50 steak. Right. It needs to be like you said, played it in gold. I want to see what this thing looks like. Right. Mm. So I ordered it, they bring it out, I eat it. And I'm like, yeah, it's all right. You know, yeah. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I, I can make this better at home. You know, um, I, I don't know if it's the extra flavoring from my nonstick pans, you know, the, the additive cancer, from, <laughs> you know, I, I have no fucking idea, but, nah, dude. um, it was okay. Like, it, and that's, that's the worst feeling is when you go out, Okay, and they want to celebrate you. And I could have gotten, you know, the $20 New York strip and, you know, a side of potatoes or, you know, whatever the case is. I could have done that, kept it cheap, and I could have had the exact same experience that I that I had with the $50 steak. Yeah. And it makes you feel bad because then now you feel like, okay, I just wasted these people's money. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so... I, yeah. I, that happens, and I would only do that kind of shit when it's not my money, obviously. Yeah, but yeah. like I, I, it happens a lot, honestly. Like I don't go out a lot either. Uh, yeah, but the, there's been a few times where I went out and I'm like, you know what, this it's a little bit more expensive, not like fifty bucks, but a little more expensive. And but you know what, let's try it. And then I tried it and immediately regret it. Immediately yeah, because oh, you're just like, damn, like I could have, I could have yeah. had. You know, like I could have went out and bought ingredients to make this and made yeah, it twenty exactly. times better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, it just it just goes to show, like it's okay if you get the cheap things. I always just get nervous when when people are like, "Are you sure that's what you yeah. want to order?" And I'm like, "Yeah, bro, I'm sure." It's like, oh, is yeah. it, that, I'm gonna eat that this. Definitely happens to me when I go out with like the in laws or whatever. Mm. Yeah, I always get like, "Can I just get a a, a glass of water?" Like, no, but we're ordering food now. Yeah. Can I just get that, like, ice cube? Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know. you know what's weird, dude? That it's like, I order water with everything now. So, like, you know from growing up in America, mm. you go anywhere to eat, you sit down, you order a Coke. Everybody knows that. Yeah. I don't do that shit anymore. I'm just like, yo, let me let me get a water or something. Oh, and yeah, then sure. I always order when, water. Yeah. And then the thing that they do now, and I think I actually got that from you. Um, and then I also stopped drinking while I'm eating mm, Yeah, because of you, I think. Um, it could be. I mean, I, I, I've been doing that for a while because yeah, mm -hmm. it just throws you up more and yeah. So I, I go and I'm like, Hey, I need some water to start. And then after my meal, I make them put in some lemon and I'm like, mm. okay. Yeah. Like cause, cause, yeah. I like the citrus, but you know, one thing I wanted to to talk about today is we had uh, released an episode where um, I wanted to name it "Fuck You Pay Me." I was so mad at my company, and this is like one of those things that I've always talked about, or I may have mentioned it on this episode. Is I go through these ups and downs, mm -hmm. and after I would say like a week or two weeks mm. uh, ago. I, I fell back in love with my job. I understand why I do it now. And I'm in a much, much better place. I am obviously still looking for, for better things of employment, but I'm in a much better headspace when it comes to my job. And um, there may have been like some, some external factors involved there, like some, some stress that I was carrying over this. We had a regional visit mm. and Basically, what the regional visits are is these regional vice presidents of the company come into your store and they evaluate you. 
they're they're basically come in and they're like, okay, you know, like your store is either doing really bad or it's doing really good, right? Mm-hmm. Um, my my new boss was all over me before this visit came. He's like, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, and it just killed me every yeah. day. Um, regional visit guy came, was like, I love your store. Your store looks beautiful. I love the ideas that you have. Your displays are awesome. This is awesome. You have a great attitude, you know, just all this stuff. It it just really like built me up and I'm still kind of riding off that high. Oh yeah. Um, you know, because when your chances of getting promoted go from, you know, a hundred to zero and then now it, it just feels like it went back up because I'm like, all right, you know, maybe this will all be worth it. Uh, oh, man, if I get that you. damn promotion. So oh, man, congrats on that, man. Mm-hmm. Deserve that. And it's good. And and it's also a good chance for me to look at my boss and be like, I fucking told you. Yeah. Like there, there's a reason to why I do things the way that I do them. I understand the way that you want it this way, but I know what needs to be done and you and need is, to trust is your boss present during this little like uh, inspection oh. or whatever, or evaluation thing or. No? Oh yes. So what we have at my company, we have, um, like, I guess the hierarchy, right? So there's mm-hmm. me, I'm the big fish in the pond at my location right. above me is a district manager who runs about 15 to 20 of these locations. Mm-hmm. Um, but not above him, but beside him, is the uh it's called an hcs which is basically just healthcare supervisor okay. right those two work together to to run stores and pharmacies top notch right mm-hmm. and then above them is a dpr which is just an area manager who is over like 12 dms or something like that Mm -hmm. Um, and then above him is the regional vice president. So our region is, uh, Oof, I think it's the entire Southeast, uh, of the country or whatever. There's like, there's only a handful of regions, but anyway, none of that's important. Um, basically it was me, my boss, my HCS, his boss, the DPR and the regional vice president all in the store at one time. It was like, the most amount of corporate leadership in a store possible and minus the uh, CEO. How tight so, was your asshole during this whole thing? So the, and, and that's the thing. Um, I don't care about those, about them. So basically my philosophy and how I'm able to get through my day is I focus on my customers mm. and you know, these guys will come to your store once a year uh, once every couple years, whatever, they're not around a lot, but mm-hmm. your customers are there every single day. Right. That's so right. my philosophy is if it's, if it's good for my customers, then it is good for them. Right. So my customers were in the store and they're like, Oh my God, we love your store. And this really helped. I had a customer meet them outside. I didn't ask this customer to do that. Mm-hmm. I had this customer met them outside and told them how much they love this location how awesome the manager is and all this other stuff. And then I had employees telling them that, um, again, Mm -hmm. I didn't ask for any of this. I don't prep my employees for these visits because they don't need that added pressure. Right. Um, I just tell them, Hey, just make sure you're in here doing everything you're supposed to do. Don't do anything crazy. Come in your proper dress code. Right. Just like any other day would be, you know, like, yeah, exactly. Like if my customers are going to see you every day, I need them to see you, Uh, how my customers see you every day. Right. Um, And I just, I relaxed. I brought out a clipboard with some paper with just like uh, a bunch of questions that I had for our regional people um, because I wanted to talk about like bonuses, raises, and just the different things and the decisions that they've made Mm -hmm. and why I agree or disagree with them basically. Okay. And this dude let me talk. Um, he kind of fluffed my ego a bit because the things I was talking about, I was talking about sales and a whole bunch of other boring shit that I don't know if anybody would care about, but Mm -hmm. I was talking about numbers. I'm really, really good with numbers. So in the middle of my conversation with him, he's like, you have to have a degree. He's like, you have a degree in business? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, dude, you're awesome. (laughs) You know, and he's, he's like, it's, he goes, it's so refreshing to talk to people who own their business like you do. 
And it, it, it fluffed my ego up a little bit, man. Yeah, you got that hard on, huh? Yeah, and he said it in front of my boss, and I'm like, see? Toad. Yeah, dude. Big old fucking mm. cheese wheel in my pants. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what was your boss's, like, your direct boss's face looking like during, like, that so, whole... So during, obviously, he's just all smiles, right? He doesn't want to come across because he's uh, nervous. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's his very first regional visit. But mm. to start off the whole thing, right, like, they walk in after my customer just raved about my store, um, they walk in and the regional vice president looked at my boss and was like, Hey man, he's like, this, this store is doing t- million times better than w- how it was when you were here. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And I was like, I didn't know what to say. And I, I just, I kind of sat there and I was like, well, I'm, I'm glad you have that impression. Thank you very much. You know? Um, shook his hand, told him my name, um, mm. said he's heard a lot about me, um, all good things. Like it, it was, it, it, it was nice, dude. It was mm. nice. And then after that, after that visit, it's like, it just instilled the trust of my boss into me because mm. he just leaves me alone. Now he lets me do what I need to do and he'll send me a couple reminders. Perfect. Oh, you know, it, it, it was just, it was everything I needed it to be. So I've just been high off of that for two weeks now. That happened last Tuesday, uh, November 7th or 8th. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I'm feeling good, man. I, I feel like I got my confidence back. I got a nice haircut. I got work going good for me. That's um, we're slated to be in a house in April. Oh, for so, real? you know, get get a four-bedroom home, hopefully have an office where I can do – our podcast a little bit better, like just good stuff's going, man. I feel like I'm on top of the world. That's awesome, dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm glad you, you know, you, I mean, I knew you were in that that tough spot and those have been ups and downs throughout, you know, your whole career. And I mean, I I think everybody goes through that, but I'm glad you stuck through it. And that even though you're not like completely closing that door towards like other opportunities, you're still, you're at least more content with what you're doing currently. And, and that's always good. You know, you don't want to be yeah. going to work, you know, dreading what you're doing and all that. And really, yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that you, uh, that everything's starting to fall into place, you know? Yeah, man. And, and wow. that, and that's what it's all about. And, I, like, and I'll be honest with you, man, these podcasts yeah. help like just being able to talk. Yeah, and engage. About, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, it's it's got its. Uh, I think podcasts in general, especially for not even like for uh, the listeners, obviously that could it could help. But I think for the podcast uh, hosts, that it, it, I think yeah. it's a way of uh, like therapy in in a way. Uh, you know, getting things yeah. off your chest and all that, and yeah, for sure, yeah. man. 100%. No, that's awesome. I mean, do you think like do you ever see yourself going up? the ladder of that uh, corporate um, hierarchy or, or what? Like, how do you see that if you, if you were to stay at your current uh, company? So with, with who I am, all right. Um, they're like, okay. I don't, I don't even know how to say this without sounding. I'll just say it. And then you can tell everybody how I sound right now. So um, a couple years ago, um, five or six years ago, when I got this job, um, mm-hmm. I was pretty much living in my car. I had to send my uh, eight month pregnant wife to go live with her parents so I could find a job to support us. Hmm. Um, I like I prayed every day. Um, I became more religious through my hardships. Right. And Hmm. I prayed every single day and I and I prayed to God and I was like, listen, if you get me this job, I will work my ass off in this job every single day. There will never be a day where I do not put my best effort in my work. I need this job, right? Mm. I get the job and um, I I do exactly what I said I was going to do. Put my best foot forward every single day. And I am in the headspace of since this is my job, I am not stopping until I'm the CEO of this company. Damn. So this is, this was, this company was my life changer. It, you know, it, Mm. it supported my family it's put food on the table. It's kept um, m- kind of my life in order, 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it just kept us afloat. So now I'm going to work my ass off until I actually run this entire company. Um, you know, you are against a ticking clock every day. So, you know, the, the reason I put so much pressure on myself to get promoted and moved up is because I need to move this forward. I cannot spend 10 years in a management position. I have to move to the next role. Um, not, not necessarily as quickly as I can, but I need to be able to be in a position to where, uh, by the time, like, cause by the time I'm CEO at this rate, I'm going to be like 90 years old. And it's just, y'all are going to look at me how America looks at Joe Biden. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's like, this dude does not need to be a CEO. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to get up there as quickly as I can. My goal CEO by 45, 50 years old, Whoa. um, in my thirties, I'll be working on like a master's. Um, and then hopefully in my forties, I'll hit a, uh, doctorates in business if I feel like going back. And then by the time I'm 50, I'm going to be gunning for CEO and then see where that takes me. Damn. That's, I mean, yeah. it sounds amazing. Like, I mean, it's, it's good that you have those ideas, like so clearly yeah. laid out, like, um, yeah. but here's my question. Like, do you have, even though you personally have that plan set Mm -hmm. you know that you have that um that goal do you see um the company providing some sort of uh plan like like project for for you like yeah like a pathway yeah yeah that pathway so that was actually something um yeah i mentioned i wrote down a bunch of questions for my uh, senior leadership and I talked to my regional vice president about career pathing and just kind of where, where I'm going to fall into all that. And, you know, the, the, the overly corporate answer. So basically for anybody listening, if you work for a corporation, um, you know, you're, you're going to start off as a sheep, but you need to work your way into being a shark. And I, and again, I know what I sound like right now and it sounds ridiculous, but you have to be a shark. Um, there are people in their roles right now that don't know that you are gunning for their job and you have to act like that. Mm -hmm. So I asked him about pathing. He's going to give me pathing to the lower level, um, to positions lower than himself. He will never give me the guiding light to surpass him because he wants to move up. Right. So with, with me, he's telling me, you know, focus on your store, get your store in order and you will be a DM before you know it. I'm like, okay, great. Um, I talked to uh, about being a, a dungeon DPR. master. Yeah, or... exactly. Okay. I cool. mean, if you, if you think thought. about it, sometimes <laughs> I feel like I work in a fucking dungeon, bro. But um, <laughs> but for, for them, they're going to give you those things. But once I make it to, I guess, uh, what's called an area supervisor mm-hmm. is like that's where the shark is going to start coming out because – uh, as you move up, there are fewer and fewer positions, right? So, like, yeah. there's a million cashiers, then there's half a million shift leads. Yeah, it's then a there's... Pyramid, pyramid scheme. Exactly. So, when you're climbing those ladders and you start getting positions that, hey, there's only, you know, a couple hundred of these positions, you got to stand out. And <laughs> right now, as a store manager, I stand out for the DM role. But then, how does a DM stand out for the area role? How does area stand out for the RVP role? And then it starts getting malicious because that's when you want to start getting people out of their role so you can slide in. Mm. Right. Because if you do the right things every single day, that doesn't mean you're going to move up. Right. You're, 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 you it, it's a little extra, extra curricular you, kind of shit. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm fine with that. I can be a shark if I need to be. Um, at the, at the position I'm in now, I don't really need to be, I just need to beat out store managers. And if anybody has ever met a store manager it is the easiest thing to do. Cause they're all fucking dumb. Um, I, again, I've had, I, I started this company as an ASMT five years ago and today I'm a store manager. So the pathing, well, I say today I was promoted to be a store manager two years in with zero retail experience. Right. So when you, when you easy get, I mean, you got to work hard, obviously, but it's, yeah, it's an easy thing to aspire to. to Yeah. Yeah. But then when you're looking at at the ranks of, you know, regional vice presidents and stuff, you're, you're playing a different game there. Mm. They, they, they're not really worried about anything other than 
you know, how, how are you reading these numbers? You know, yeah. how is your, how is your, how are you making, how are your decisions making your businesses profitable? And, and that's the thing, like how, what, what the hell are these people up there like doing like on their day to day besides Bro. what are they doing? Like reading shit, like I mean, the, the only, the only thing I can think, right. Is, um, you know, you have to make marketing decisions in each region. There has to be something going on to where it's like right now in the South, um, abortion stuff is just going rampant right now. It's like people are approving it, disapproving it. We have to send out, um, you know, we have to ban certain medications from being filled if this person is pregnant because it could give them an abortion. Um, you know, there, there are so many different laws. So like you, you really stop worrying more, like you're worried a little bit less about, you know, are these in stands where they're supposed to be. Right. And you're a little mm -hmm. bit more worried about the law side of things. And you're worried more about, um, compliance, making sure that we're not breaking laws and ultimately yeah. saving the company a lot of money. way bigger picture. You know, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I've always been a big picture guy. And that's why I struggle a little bit as a store manager, because they want me to see things at a smaller scale. But I'm like, look, the things that I'm doing are ultimately have zero impact on my business. Mm -hmm. I understand you want gum merchandise next to breath mints, but at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. What matters is this, you know, and I break down my business to them and they really right. like that. But when you have a DM that, I mean, just quite frankly, doesn't know business he only knows just small things behaviors mm -hmm. i don't know um it's hard for him to really identify the talent that i have so what i spend a lot of time doing is networking and showing uh higher ups and stuff like that my talents and what i am good at so that yeah. they you know because ultimately my dm doesn't decide if i get promoted the regional vice president does and now mm -hmm. that he knows i have a good head on my shoulders he might remember me when a position comes up, you know? And can you make that big of a, like how, how big of a jump do you think you can make from your current position? Like how, you know, like how high up could you get if like that so, guy like decides to, to bring you up? Um, so I, I, it's un like, I don't know. It, it's unheard of for somebody to go from store manager to uh, DPR. It just won't happen because the experience isn't there. Mm -hmm. You you have to do it one position at a time. So you have to climb each individual rung mm -hmm. until you're up there. So um, mm -hmm. what I could do is if I make regional vice president, I can um, go do some other corporate things for another company. And then I could come back and, you know, after that experience and be the CEO here, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, because I was going to ask that, like how, like the higher ups, I'm, I'm like – pretty sure that not all the probably not even like half of the higher ups maybe like they've never even worked as a normal uh like store employee or it, I mean, well this or have the all C of them gone through that the ceo has not so like if i were to go yeah i've never been a cashier but every well, okay i mean i mean, cashier or, or just you know uh another store like yes so everybody minus the CEOs, okay, mm -hmm. every one of them has started in a, in a store. Okay. And that is the beautiful thing about the company I work for is there is a pathway to CEO from the very bottom position mm. of the company. A cashier could work, you know, their entire lives and eventually be a CEO if they, if they do the things that they need to do. Mm -hmm. Right. But most of the leadership, um, believe it or not, they started as pharmacists. Okay. And um, the pharmacist would get moved up the chain and become regional. That's why our company is in dire straits is because they're putting fucking pharmacists in charge of business operations. Right. And really, yeah, makes zero sense. Yeah. yeah. So and, and I understand why I understand the logic, but there, there's there's two different types of skill sets there. And your average pharmacist is not, is not a businessman. That's mm -hmm. why they work for a corporation. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah they yeah. work. Yeah. Makes sense. But, you know, I mean, outside of all of that, I mean, I just, 
I, I wasn't even expecting to talk about all that, but no, I'm but glad dude, I did. Super interesting because I mean, yeah. I and I, I mean, even like I mean, at least it's interesting to me, and I don't know if those out there listening find it interesting, but yeah, who the fuck cares? No, nah, um, <laughs> I mean. I just find it really interesting because it's yeah. uh, it's something that I'm I'm not familiar with at all because um, the work experience that I had in the states is basically none. Um, yeah. So because I left right where most people would start, you know, going out and working and doing all that. Right. I, part of me wishes that um, you know I would have found a way to stay and like kind of gone through that grind. Um, not that I haven't had a grind here, but it's just a, a different grind. Um, and so I think it would have been, it would have been cool. Um, cause well, my, most my work, of it yeah. at a certain point, man, is politics. Yeah. Like, that whole saying, it's not what you know, it's who, you know, like yeah. that, that's sure. very true. Oh, yeah. Um, in my experience, it, it, it's, it's what you, it's what you can show people hold on how do i say this not what you know but who you know it's It's what you can show the right person what you know yeah you you have to show that right person the who you knows what you know Mm -hmm. right so you know because i i i know the ceo of our company Mm. but if he doesn't know what i know then it doesn't matter so you have you have to meet those people and really put on display like i knew they were not there to look at my store. They were there to look at me and where mm-hmm. my head's at and what, what do I think about things like, um, you know, at the other stores, he asked the same question. He has one question that he asked all of the stores and it was, why do you think we're down in sales? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and most people will tell them, Oh, you know, our price prices keep getting increased and, uh, we, you know, we have call outs, so the stores aren't being staffed proper. Uh, they'll, they'll say all these things, but right. for me, that was an opportunity to, to put on a much bigger display of, I'm not thinking about what happened yesterday. I'm not mm-hmm. thinking about what happened four months ago. This is why we're down in sales. Right. And so ultimately what I wound up telling him was, um, you know, one to two years ago, we were getting stimulus checks from the government per Mm -hmm. family member. So last year at this time, we had people walking around with over $8,000 in their back pocket. Mm -hmm. Then on coupled on top of that, a lot of companies made a lot of money and paid out their employees very, very well. So there was a lot more money in the economy, right? Um, Once all that stimulus money subsided, and once all that stuff kind of, kind of wound down, we're trending down in sales because Walgreens did not account for the stimulus money. And they, whoever made our uh, budgets, they included numbers that never existed. They included Mm -hmm. a spike of um, what is it? Um, A spike of, or an influx of money that would never exist on a regular basis. Right. So they budgeted in COVID numbers. That's what, that's what we call them. They budgeted in COVID numbers, and then now it's making it look like we're performing terribly when in reality we're doing 5% better um, than we were last year. Mm. But because of these targets, it makes it look like we're low performing. We aren't low performing. Right. So you're we're not just meeting, not. You're not meeting up to the standards that are not realistic standards. They're, yeah. they're standards that are kind of. Uh, well, they're based made up. On things that are not actually. It, it, it's as if the entire country was given welfare checks and told yeah. to go spend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 that's the thing is like we got the stimulus money, dude. Last year, um, I, I mean, I made more money last year than I ever have. Mm. Right, I have a base salary of sixty k. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went and I did my taxes, and it was somewhere in the ballpark of ninety two thousand dollars. Right. Because they you get your bonus, you get the stimulus money, you get the tax returns, you get all this shit Mm. and it just sits there and you you have all this money. And this year I'm looking at my W-2s. I'm at 65 because Mm. of my bonus. That's that's almost a thirty thousand dollar drop. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and $30,000 is a lot of money and I'm just your average American. So when we look at our businesses and people have $30,000 less or more than what they had last year, yeah, we're down in sales, bro. You guys fucked up your, your budgets and your numbers to um, please corporate shareholders, which I understand, but we should have never have done that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing though, like the higher ups and all that and, and they're, cause they always want to, I mean, like you said, it's understandable because that's kind of what they have to do. But they're yeah. kind of kissing ass or whatever, then showing like, "Oh, this is all we can do" and all that. And uh-huh. obviously, they have to do that because the shareholders will want to see and expect that kind of stuff. But then it it kind of trickles down and affects just but everybody s- else. And then you know, it's. But see, what winds up happening is is we flexed for our shareholders. We said, right. "Hey." If we did this well last year, this year we're going to do 5% better, right? Mm. Um, The shareholders are now scared. Our stock price got cut in half. Mm. They're scared because we said what we were going to do and we didn't do it. Now, had we been honest and said, listen, this is not a common occurrence. There was a lot of government intervention. There was a lot of money rolling around in our economy. We are not going to do that this year. This year we're gonna brace and we're gonna and we're gonna hold on, but yeah. we're gonna try to tack on a, an extra five percent to our normal numbers instead of being thirty percent down in sales. We're actually projecting to be five percent up over last year. Had they been honest from that, right. we would have been fine. But they scared the shit out of the shareholders. The CEO stepped down, and our our yeah, uh, just crazy dude, just crazy stuff. And, and that's the problem with publicly traded companies is they're, they're doing things to impress them, but they wind up scaring them. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. I guess it's just cause they're not they're I guess they kind of like how you said, like people were living off that stimulus check. A lot of the higher ups maybe were doing the same in the sense yeah. of like where they were seeing all the numbers. And so they were still, you know, up in that high. You know, and then, yeah. uh, dude, for for Christmas last year, I had over ten thousand dollars to do whatever I wanted with. <laughs> like, like, I just don't understand. And today, I have five dollars. Like That's the significant lot. difference. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? And it's like, like last year we were doing. Everybody's getting Christmas presents. Everybody's doing this. Everybody. I, I mean, I felt like fucking Oprah, dude. Yeah, but this year, no, we're gonna be but, uh, we're gonna be stingy, and and that's what a lot of people are doing. I am your average American. If this is what I'm doing, yeah. most of everybody's doing this too, and that's why most companies are seeing those failures. And uh, interestingly enough, that's why Walmart is picking back up. That's why certain businesses are picking back up because now we're all going back to cheaper things. Uh, mm. Walmart's um, own brand, great value. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're doing numbers they've never seen before, yeah. because we had all gotten used to a higher standard of living with uh, all this different type of money rolling in, companies giving out money, people working from home, just you know, doing all that stuff. But I mean, and there then, had there had to be people, you know, the the people that pulled strings and all that. There had to be people that knew something like this was going to happen. Because I mean, you're talking about your specific case and your specific company, but this, I mean, this is so they all they over. did it's not just they did yeah. know, and those people. So now I am speaking specific to my company. Those people that did know, they left. Mm. Okay. Yeah. They they the the uh, Wait, proverbial they left or were they were they made to leave. Um. It is honestly, it's probably a mixture of both. Okay. Um, I know it started uh, probably at the peak of COVID. A lot of people started walking out. Um, now we're restabilized. People are quitting their jobs. And then uh, we fired half of our corporate leadership. Hmm. And, you know, so, uh, honestly, some of it was good choices, but some of it wasn't. But they, it, I don't even know. I mean, it, it's one of those things where, you you have to take the good with the bad, right? And when they saw that writing on the wall, there are the people that left, they left because they saw the writing on the wall. Hmm. They're like, I'm going to lose my job over this. I'm gonna tell these corporate shareholders that we need to, that we are gonna have a thirty percent increase. And when hmm. we don't hit it, 
I'm going to get fired. So before I ruin my image, I'm going to go ahead and turn in my resignation, leave, shit hits the fan. It hit the fan because that guy wasn't there, not because he was there, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, I mean, like I said, it, get, it gets very political the higher you go. Um, yeah, you know, I don't know if I could handle all that, man. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I love it. I live for that shit, dude. I don't know why. I don't know if I like, like just Americans loving drama. I have no idea why. Could be. But the thing is, like, like I, I, I like it in the sense of like watching it like a TV series or a movie or whatever. But like living through that, knowing that there, it's so cutthroat when, yeah. when you get up there, you know, like there is some sort of, um, I guess you you kind of like that feeling because it's kind of like uh, primitive like a in a way, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I um, can see that. But then at the same time, it's like, I don't want that that all over like that thing looming over me uh constantly and thinking like oh what if i if i do this they're gonna think this or if i you know don't do that they're gonna think that and so like i don't like having all that pressure over just you know well see the beauty the beauty of it is is you know and this will make the second episode where i quote a mafia movie but Mm. or pretty much any other movie but um that whole thing where it's like, yo, it's not personal. It's business. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's not a personal thing. Hey, it's business. Um, this is what I have to do. I'm leaving those people that leave, uh, the, the, the higher ups, the corporate, you know, whatever that, that leave, they're going to go get, um, a really good job somewhere. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm attached to the company I work for where I'm like, no, I want this company to be successful because I work for it. But the higher you go, it's like, look, this is business. Um, this business is not doing well. So I'm leaving, Mm. you know, because I know ultimately this isn't going to do it. And those people know you can, you can tell when your company is about to go through some shit, right? Yeah. That's why insider trading is illegal. Like if I were to tell people like, Hey, this is what's going on, blah, blah, blah. You have like whistleblowers and all that other stuff. Um, you you could swing the stock market um, in certain ways, you know, and a lot of people don't understand that. But no, yeah, I mean, I mean obviously it makes sense, yeah, that you so, that little little actions that have way bigger uh, effects over, you know, like yeah. you said, especially with corporations. I mean, I mean specifically with corporate, yeah. That's... And the and the thing is, is like if you were working and you were doing that thing. You wouldn't like you, you, you would like right now you would feel like it's a looming. You'd be like, Oh my God, I, I don't know what mm-hmm. to do. But when you're in that position, the knowledge and the experience that you have, you're, mm-hmm. you're not going to care. You're just going to be like, Oh man, like this is about to be bad. I'm going to go see if, you know, dollar general needs, you know, corporate leadership. I'm going to go see if this company needs it. I'm going to go see mm-hmm. if this one does. Um, and they'll pick you up. You know, right. you're, you're, you're running a multi-million dollar business. They'll pick you up. You're, you're going to get another job. It's not a question of, cause you and I, it's a question of shit. Like, what if I don't find anything for them? It's a question of like, okay, who am I going to work with? Right. Who, who matches me? You yeah. Know? When you're up there and the, the top dogs, mm-hmm. they, they all, I mean, everybody wants a top dog, right? If they're all yep. uh, dog fighting coaches and you're yeah. a top dog, you're going to fight. Yeah, I don't know what what sort of metaphor I was going for. <laughs> I don't know. I like it. I like it. I like it. But you're it's true, man. And you're not. You're not. You know. Yeah, like you said. Like if you're in the lowest of the low ranks, then yeah, it's going to be about you know your day to day. Am I going to eat tomorrow? You know, right? Or whatever. But yeah, when you're up there at the very top, it's just going to be yeah. Yeah, like where from am I going to work? To another. Yeah, I mean, we see. I mean, I'm not a big on like corporate stuff, but. Um, I do follow like some like video game stuff and obviously there's corporations and that and yep. um, you, I see like in in video game news and all that stuff where like, you know, they change CEOs or whatever and this and that and how that affects the whole uh, industry. Yep. And so, yeah, you, you see that like happening all the time where they just jump from one company to another. And, and now guess, that's what yeah. CEOs are paid to do. If you actually look. Mm -hmm. at ceos like a lot of people uh including myself up until maybe a month ago when i talked to my mentor 
Mm-hmm. Um, I used to see CEOs as people who were just so devout to this company. They love this company and they, they just want to do everything they possibly can for this company, take care of the people. They don't get paid for that at all. Yeah. They yeah. get paid to place hold. They are there yeah. to be a face. Uh, a pleasant face is always preferable. Um, talk to the media, you know, do stuff like that. They're almost like uh, the presidents of America yeah. where they make no real decisions. No, all those decisions are made for them and they uh, stand beside those decisions. And yeah. when shit hits the fan, we have somebody to say, hey, you're gone. So we don't have yeah, to you fire. Got, you, got, you got a finger to point at. Yeah. And then they're basically just like, all right, cool. No problem. I'm going to take my bonus and uh, half my yearly pay. And I'm going to go see if Starbucks is hiring for CEOs, basically. Yeah. But I guess like you, if being a CEO, you would before you fuck anything up, you'd probably want to, you know, because if, if that's going to taint your name, whatever you do, you know, maybe yeah. no other company wants to hire you, depending on what you do. You and know. that's what I'm waiting for to see if our former CEO, I want to see where she goes. Mm. Um, because I am, I am very, very curious about that. And because this three year stint mm-hmm. and me saying this right now, people already know who I work for if they pay attention. Sure. Um, but this three year stint, that she did at this company and just left her name is going to be ran through the mud, dude. Yeah. Like in the worst. Yeah, kind that's of way. What I'm, yeah. That's what I was referring to. Like, yeah. If you up there and, and you get up to those top, top tiers and you're doing your job and all that. Um, yeah. It's easy to jump from one company to another one. Maybe another one offers a bigger pay, blah, 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 blah. But then if you do something or maybe you don't do something, because like you said, you're just the face. But if something happens to that company and you're the face of that company and that your face gets tainted some way, then there's no other maybe there's no other company to jump to. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this then. All right. Mm. Um, you're a CEO. You're 50 years old and mm-hmm. you just got, I don't know, half a billion dollar in bonuses and salary um, advances and stuff like that. And then you're told to leave. Oh, you're retired. You're done. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? If, if, uh, you don't. If you don't we're talking have about to that go. bigger pay. Yeah, then I'm not looking for anything else. No, yeah, e- e- even even a quarter, like not not a quarter mil, even a quarter of a billion dollars. If I gave you 250 million dollars and said, "Hey, we're gonna have to go ahead and part ways here. We appreciate everything you've done, but you're gonna have to step down." Right? Okay, no problem. I'm gonna go retire. I'm gonna go live in Mexico on the beach and just drink all oh, day yeah. until I die. You That's know? What I'm saying. It depends on, on what the situation is. I'm sure that, you know, depending on, on what company and well, and what event could, you know, lead to you having to step down or whatever. But um, yeah. but most often, yeah, it was probably it's probably one of those cases where they offer a certain amount and then uh, they just say, hey, man, you got to go. And yep. then I'm sure they would happily take that. I mean, I, yeah, damn. I'm done. That's my retirement right there. Mm-hmm. I have worked. For 50 years to get to this point, now I can retire. Run my name through the mud. I don't yeah. care because I'm going to go live happy somewhere. So is that your goal? Not getting your name run through the mud, but like, is your goal to reach to that point where if they ever ask you to step down, you would gladly do so and then just accept so, your, your... So it could be... And this is the thing. Like, if I if I do it, I'm obviously I'm going to want to be the best at it. Um, Mm -hmm. the reason I want to be the CEO of this company is I believe I could do a lot of really good things for a lot of people. Right. I wouldn't, Mm -hmm. my goal would not to be to step down. It would be to just die in that role. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To be like, like Julius Caesar, not get stabbed in the back or anything, but to be a man of the people and really be a face of this company yeah. And really just make decisions to not only better um, people's lives, but my employees' lives all the way down to CSA to recognize them and not have them feel this awful corporate pressure where it's like, look, you know, I'm CEO. I'm the face. I'm here to to just, you know, thank you guys, because without you, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like that, that's really my ultimate end goal is to work my ass off all the way till I get to that position and then spend the rest of my time there just being a man of the people. 
you That's know, it, yeah. And just, and just, if I got to make a decision, how is this decision going to affect my employees first? And, and okay. So do you think you could, because when, when, when you get up to higher altitudes, okay, mm -hmm. let's say you, you start running low on oxygen and when you start running low on oxygen, you start acting funny and you start changing the way you think and, yep. and maybe you become a little more like you start seeing shit. You start seeing a dragon flying over the, the rainbow and shit. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is like, do you Will... see yourself acting the same now? Like you're what you're saying right now. Uh, and whenever you get up to one of those like vice president, something or, uh, you know, higher to, to, to where you want to go, like higher to your goal, like on your way there, do you see that? Like, do you not think that at some point there might be something that it just inevitably corrupts some of your views on like what you want to do? Because you said earlier, like, you're not like, you're fine with being a shark, which is perfect. That's cool. But yep. like, do you not see that maybe, affecting your way of uh thinking or living or acting or any of that like being corrupt by the sharpness yeah absolutely i i think um you live a certain um here we go again with mafia movies look at donnie brasco right um mm -hmm. you live a certain lifestyle long enough you're gonna eventually turn into that thing that you hate Yeah. And the only strategy that I can really think of to kind of keep myself grounded, mm -hmm. right? Because even as a store manager, okay, um, again, with, with the salary that I make now compared to where I was five years ago, there are some things that I forgot about, right? But then how do I keep myself grounded is really the main mission. Yeah. And what I would like to do and what what is almost like unheard of, right? You have... CEOs where their consults are just other fucking lower level CEOs. Their consults are just people who have not walked that way of life. I mean, I would, I would spend time talking to the lowers and, and, mm. and I hate saying that because they're not lower people. They're lower no, no, positions, no, lower ranks. That's fine. You know, yeah. you, you as a CEO, you go down. I mean, look at, look at it as a captain, Or somebody who runs a, a a legion of of military people, if you're only talking to your generals, what fucking idea do you have in your yeah. head that you are getting the real picture? Because you're not getting real feedback from these generals. They are telling you a what you want to hear, and they're they're gonna lie to you. They're gonna make mm -hmm. you feel like everything is okay when it's not. And for me, if I'm that leader, I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the chain. I'm going to go talk to a store manager and be like, Hey, I need you to be real with me. Don't be, don't be corporate bullshit. I need to know what's going on out here because the smartest person would know. And this is what I get mad about our regional people is they come in. My district manager is freaking out because the store is not quote unquote perfect. Well, my thought process is he doesn't need to see it perfect. He needs to see what this thing looks like day to day or else he's going to go back to his bosses and talk about how perfect everything is. And now we have this fallacy of perfection that just doesn't exist. You need to know what type of company you're running. You need to know what stores uh, look like on a regular basis. So then you can make informed decisions on how to fix these things. Yeah. And um, so what I'm saying is, is yes, you can 100% lose that way. Um, if you're, if you're stuck being a shark the whole time, but I'm going to be a shark to the people that are lateral and above me. Right to the people below me, True. they are my best resource on what the fuck is actually going on out there. That's that's a really good way of putting it. I think, um, well, it's similar to I don't know if you ever seen that show where like the the CEO, yeah, Shark Tank. No, okay, whoops, the... <laughs> whoops, 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 Whoop. whoops, whoops. <laughs> no. Fuck that up. What, what's what's it called? Uh, I don't know the name, but you know, the CEO like uh, gets some sort of like disguise and goes in. And... Oh, undercover boss. Yeah. Undercover boss. There, yeah. 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 You would do that shit, huh? Yeah. I, I wouldn't even go undercover, man. Like that. That's the thing. Is well, I, the thing I about wanting to cover, which I do agree with, like the whole premise of the show is that, you know, people, especially in like the lower ranks would be more open to talk about, you know, the higher ups or whatever. 
if they were talking to a you know uh but but see that's the same level that's the culture shift that i want to push me like mm-hmm. the most important person is your customer base i do not matter like this is what i tell my team i, I caught one of my csa saying this the other day uh csa is customer service associate they are basically cashiers mm-hmm. um and they were like yeah i did this thing because i didn't want you to walk into it i was like i don't fucking matter I need you to do this so my customers don't walk into this. I need mm. you to do this thing so the customers don't walk into it. I need you to stock shelves so the customers walk into full shelves. It doesn't matter to me at all if the shelves are full because it I'm not matter, buying. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, I'm not fucking here to buy it. I'm here to make sure the shelves are full. I'm here to make sure you fill these shelves. Like It's not for me. And Mm. the only reason I talk to you about it and like, hey, why didn't this happen? Why didn't this happen? Is so that when my customers come in, they will walk into a better experience. And that same type of mindset, I want to keep that with me everywhere I go. So even as a CEO, and this is what I mean, uh, like a culture shift, um, it shouldn't matter. You shouldn't have to hide from me. I'm literally just here to see how your business is doing. If your business is doing bad and then I walk in and everything's perfect, you think mm. I'm not going to know yeah. that, oh, you guys definitely dress it. You're putting on a show. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're putting on a show for me. Um, I need y'all to be real. I'm not going to fire you. I need to get down to the bottom of this. Don't don't lie to me. You lie to me, then I will fire you. But we need to we need to have a culture shift in, a, in corporations to where people are not afraid of corporate leaders. Corporate leaders need to understand that people are afraid mm. of them and they need to change that. So I will be working my ass off for the next X amount of years to where I can achieve that culture shift in a, in a corporate environment. Damn. You know what I mean? And you think, and you think that's uh, something that would, uh, would expand even further from just your company or do you it think could. that's something that people, the other companies could maybe, you know, uh, take a note from, from your book and be like, Hey, look how, how good they're doing and all that. Or, and see, and that's the goal because we, we spend so much time, the company I work for, we spend so much time um, idolizing Chick-fil-A, right? Mm-hmm. They have great customer service. They, they meet you outside to do all this stuff. We idolize them, but then we do nothing from their book. We don't yeah. give uh, people the four-day work week. We don't give people uh, Sundays off. We don't give them holidays off. We work the shit out of all these people. It's like we idolize these people doing the right things. And then mm. we go and do something totally different. If you want the Chick Fil A yeah. experience, you need to treat the employees how they're treated. Is and, that like the the top? I guess in corporate world, is that is that is that one I of the best so. companies for like as a reference of the best, like the healthiest kind of employee yeah. slash employer? Relationship? Absolutely. And the only reason they're able to achieve that is because they're a private company. They don't answer to shareholders. They can they can run their locations how they wish to run them. That's true. And they have to answer to people. I mean, you 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 walk into a Chick Fil A and somebody says, "Welcome to Chick Fil A. What the fuck do you want?" That person's going to get fired. So there are standards there. But if you're going to want that experience for your location, you need to replicate their ideas. Hmm. You need to replicate hire their employees, make an offer to one of their employees, and see what they can bring to the table, recruit, go, go do some talking. If you're a CEO, go figure out how, how Chick-fil-A gets that experience, right? Because the way my company's headed, we're headed towards a Walmart experience and we don't want that, you know, well, like, I mean, that's, that's like the shittiest experience you can get, but people still shop at Walmart. You know what I mean? Well, um, I, I think, I think it, it comes down to just price and I mean, yeah. Even and then, and then you, they, you, you're kind of saying like, well, I'm paying, I, I mean, I'm paying this amount. I'm going to expect this service, like, you know, yeah. like this shitty, you know, shitty amount for a shitty service. Like, that's kind of like. Yeah. And I, and I think that's a sacrifice we shouldn't have to make. No. I feel like your employees should be happy that they're there and look forward to talking to you. Yes, I know people are assholes. Um, I've, I've had customers that are just irate. Um, people Mm -hmm. that are just unpleasable, fine. But I get for every one of those, I have like a hundred other customers. Yeah. So why am I catering to the 1%? I'm not fuck them. I'm going to have the customers that don't even interact. Maybe. Yeah. 
and that's they don't fine. Fall under either category where they're those, not like you know. Those are my favorite customers. Hey, welcome to Walgreens. Hey, I'm I'm just looking. You know. Yeah. Hey, welcome to Walmart. Hey, no, please don't do that. Hey, welcome to Foot Locker. No, no, no. You know, just just little things like that. Yeah. Um, people who don't want to interact, like it's okay. Like, don't worry about it. You know, like, I, I just want to make sure that you as a customer know if you need something that we're here to help you. And that's mm. it. And then that's beautiful. for people to to fake that, I think is the biggest disservice. And to fake it in front of corporate leadership is the mm. biggest disservice because corporate leadership has no idea how the workforce has changed. Mm. They don't know. Yeah, they that, see the reality and then they'll just think, oh, everything's just fine and dandy. And then, yeah, and then they set these ridiculous targets and things yeah. because we put on shows. And I, and I told my boss, I do not do that. I refuse yeah. to do that. He's going to come here and he's going to see what everything is looking like on a daily basis um, because I, I, I just don't believe in it. And it makes for an unrealistic work environment that nobody wants to work in. Mm-hmm. So, that's that's what I'm working for. So if companies take pages out of my book, I mean, hell yeah, I'll take it. But at the end of the day, I'm working for the cashiers that are getting paid bottom dollar working at Walmart, McDonald's, working at, um, I don't know, uh, CVS, Walgreens, all, all these places where they're just cashiers. I'm working to create a better work environment for them. And then it just goes up the chain, chain all the way, you yeah. know. So, so that's that's, that's my goal. Well, since since I opened up this episode, let me let me close it uh, in the sure. same same way you do. Uh, by okay. Asking a question, um, and since we've been talking about you know corporate life and all that, um, you know what what would you say to like any any person out there listening to to this podcast and listening to this whole like discussion that we just had um what would you say to somebody that's working that corporate life um even though like to to someone that doesn't want to go up the ladder um and to someone that does want to go up like what would you share to either person like two people come up to up to you and then like i I just want to you know get paid and that's it and blah 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 what would you say to them i guess could be like what would you say to one of your employees at your store and then what would you say to somebody that you know, has that same thrive that you got, you know, where they want yeah. to go up and, 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 and achieve. And, and not only for the uh, selfish um, reasons that some people could have, but kind of like for the same reasons you have, where you just want to yeah. actually make everything a little better. Uh, you know, what would you say to each of those, those, those two types of people that work in corporate? So for people who don't want to move up, um, you know, it, it's, like, I don't know, for people who don't want to move up, for me, they are the cornerstones of your company. These are people in positions that like their position and they want to do well at it and or well enough. Mm-hmm. And my my advice to them, or not advice, but just something I would say to them is don't get complacent. Understand that mm-hmm. you work in an ever-changing environment and that just because you were doing something that worked five years ago, hell, even last year, doesn't mean it works today. The workforce is consistently changing every single mm-hmm. day and you have to be just as adaptable than you, uh, as you were a year ago or five years ago, 10 years ago, so on and so forth. So to never get complacent in your role, even though you don't want to move up, you shouldn't be blinded by uh, complacency. You should, mm-hmm. you should always uh, seek to understand because now you have made it. You have achieved your goal. You are where you want to be in life. Um, you are where you want to be in this company. Own it and be the cornerstone of this company. Be that person in that position that everybody can rely on and study your role every day. Learn your role until you've mastered it. And because of the ever-changing atmosphere, you will never master it. So treat it like that. Now, for the people that want to move yeah. up is basically don't lose yourself trying mm. to please other people. Um, I am somebody who is a big believer in working for um, the, I guess, the lower. I don't even want to say that. It just sounds so disrespectful. But I, you should be working to please the people beneath you, not above you. 
You mm. keep the people beneath you happy. They will prop you up to where you get where you are trying to go. The people mm. below you will stand behind you. They will go to hell and back for you. You need to treat them as good as gold and they will prop you up to where when it's your time to move up, there's going to be no question about it. You go mm. to any store I've ever worked at. You talk to anybody I've ever worked for. They will tell you that that is how I've founded myself or that is my foundation to getting myself to where I want to be as quickly as I'm doing it is I'm, I'm just one person. I prop myself up on a team that I built and uh, the relationships that I've formed on the way. Um, you know, uh, the simplest example I can give is I have a CSA uh, cashier mm -hmm. who, whose car broke down. They couldn't make it to work. Um, I have a couple store managers that were like, you should fire them. Well, I'm not going to do that because their cars broke down. They obviously are hurting for money. Why would I treat that person that way? We're going to mm. work for a solution. Now, that person, after I helped them kind of uh, maneuver through that, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but just that inconvenience. Yeah. Um, they're one of my best cashiers and they work their ass off for me. They're never late. They're always early and they have zero issues picking up shifts, taking call outs. They will do anything I need them to do because I started off with the understanding of, listen, I understand you're in a bad situation. We're going to work through it together. Right. Wow. And that cashier met my regional supervisor, told them how great I was right now. Imagine if I had fired that person. Oh yeah. Now, now how does that make a, how does that make my company look that we terminate for that? And B, how does that make me look in my brand? Right. And mm -hmm. then see where's the compassion and where's the humanity and understanding where people are. So if you're trying to move up, it's not about you. It's about the people that you support and prop yourself up on them. That is beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. Uh, well, Brandon, man of the people. <laughs> um, thank you for uh, for sharing all this. I, to me, it's been yeah. super interesting. I mean, I mean, we're best friends and brothers and everything, but I still, uh, you know, there's still stuff that you know your day to day kind of uh, things that I, I mean, I know what you work, uh, where you work, and all that stuff. But that kind of yeah. stuff, that insight into where you where you want to go and, and and where you're at and where you want to go and how you want to get there, that's uh, that's beautiful, beautiful to see. So uh, thank you for sharing all that. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Yeah. And uh, well, I guess uh, we'll see each other next week with yep. another episode where we'll talk about McDonald's. <laughs> uh, <that works. laughs> it's free real estate. <laughs> anyway. All no, right, but, man. Uh, thank you, uh, Brandon. And uh, I guess I'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Have a good one. Have a good one, y'all. Bye bye.